Hi everyone, in this video we will be talking about the physics problem where there are two blocks stacked on each other. Personally, when I was in grade 12, I found this a very confusing problem to solve, but hopefully from this video it will make more sense. Okay, so let's start with a system diagram to show what's actually going on in this situation. So we have two blocks stacked on each other, so let's call this one M1 and then this one M2. And there's going to be some applied force that's pushing on the bottom block. And usually in this problem, what we're looking for is the maximum applied force before this top block starts slipping off of the bottom block. Now let's make free body diagrams so we can figure out which forces are acting on each of the two blocks. So for the bottom block, we have the applied force and we have the force of gravity, so those are pretty straightforward. And we also have the normal force because it's on a table or some other surface, so the table is pushing up on the block. And we have a force from the top block pushing down, so we can call that FG2 because it's gravity that was pulling down the top block and then putting the force on the bottom block. And we also have these two forces of friction. Notice that the friction is going in the opposite direction as the applied force because the friction is trying to resist the movement of the block. So we have FS, which is static friction because of the two blocks touching each other. And we have FK, which is kinetic friction because of the bottom block sliding along the table. So you can see that there's quite a few forces acting on the bottom block, so make sure that you include them in your diagram. And then this is the top block, which has fewer forces acting on it. So we have the force of gravity, and we have a normal force because of the bottom block pushing up on it. And we also have a force of static friction between the two blocks. And notice here that this static friction is in the opposite direction as the static friction from the bottom block. And that's because of Newton's third law. Every action force has an equal and opposite reaction force. So you can imagine that the top block is trying to hold back the bottom block from moving in this direction of the applied force, but at the same time the bottom block is trying to make the top block move along with it in the direction of the applied force. And it also makes sense that this static friction is in the same direction as the applied force, because this force is actually what's going to cause the top block to move when you push or pull on the bottom block. The two blocks will move together in the same direction until you apply so much force that it kind of overpowers the maximum force of static friction. In that case, the static friction would be too small to make this top block move forward at the same acceleration as the bottom block, and so that's what actually makes the top block fall off. I would also like to give a small note about static friction. So there can actually be many different forces of static friction with different coefficients of static friction between two objects. And that's because it's possible to put many different amounts of force on an object before it starts moving. So you can imagine like if you have a book on your desk, you could put like barely any force, like just barely touching it, or you could push it with more strength and it still might not move. So what we're usually focusing on is the maximum force of static friction, which is written as Fs max, and that represents the maximum force right before the objects start to slip off each other. And once they start to move against each other, then we're going to call that kinetic friction instead of static friction because they're moving rather than staying still. Alright, so now let's do a practice problem where we actually solve it. So there could be many different variations of this question, but the most common thing I've seen is trying to figure out what is that maximum force that can be applied to the bottom block mass 1 without the top block mass 2 slipping off. And so in this situation, we know both masses of the blocks, we know the coefficient of kinetic friction of mass 1 against the table, and we know the coefficient of static friction between the two blocks. And we can assume that this is the coefficient of the maximum static friction right before the two blocks would start to slip. So for the rest of this question, when I write Fs or mu s, I'm referring to the maximum static friction. And so here are the two free body diagrams that I drew earlier, where M1 is on the bottom and M2 is on the top, so we can just use those for reference throughout the solution. And I'm also going to define a convention, so that's basically saying which direction is positive. I randomly chose that the positive direction is going to be left, because that's the same direction as the applied force. And the convention just helps us to know whether to add or subtract things, because if we don't have a convention, then we might end up adding when we should be subtracting, or vice versa. Okay, so now let's get started. The main goal for what we're doing is trying to figure out the value of this applied force that will give both blocks the same acceleration. Because if they're both starting at the same velocity and they both accelerate at the same rate, that means they're moving together and not sliding off. And as soon as the two blocks have a different acceleration is when the top block is going to fall off. 
So through this whole solution, we're going to say the acceleration of mass 1 must be the same as the acceleration of mass 2, and that's what's going to allow us to actually solve this. So let's look at the top block first. So we really just want to get some equations that relate its acceleration to these four quantities that we were given in the question. So we know that the net force equals the mass times acceleration because that's Newton's second law. So if we look at specifically the x direction, the only force and therefore the net force is Fs, the force of static friction. And we know that static friction equals the coefficient of static friction times the normal force acting on the object. And we can tell that the net force in the y direction is going to be zero because the boxes are only moving to side to side. They're not moving up and down. So that means that this normal force must equal the force of gravity acting on the object. And we know that the force of gravity is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So if we sub that all in, here's what we get. We're subbing in that Fn2 equals m2 times g. So that's what we get for this first equation here. Now let's take a look at the bottom block. So again, we can take a look at the net force in the x direction using Newton's second law. But in this case, we have three forces in the x direction. So we have to add those all up to represent this net force. And this is where the convention is actually really important. So you can tell that like this force is going left and these two forces are going right. So we have to know which ones are going to be positive and which ones are going to be negative. So this one's positive from our convention, and then these two are negative. So we're going to say the applied force minus Fs minus Fk equals m1 times the acceleration. So now let's sub in what do these three forces actually equal based on this information in the question. So the applied forces are unknown, so we are just going to leave it like that. The force of static friction must be the exact same force as this force of static friction because it's an equal and opposite reaction force. So since we derived over here that Fs equals all of this, we can just sub that in on this side as well, because we've already derived that from the previous section. And the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu k times the normal force Fn1 over here. And in this case, Fn1 does not just equal the force of gravity like it doesn't just equal this force of gravity, it will actually equal the sum of both of these forces of gravity because these are two forces pulling down that must equal this one force pulling up. So we can actually say that Fn1 equals g times m1 plus m2 and I just factored out the g to make it easier but you can keep it in there if you want. So now that we have equation 1 and equation 2, notice that we have two equations and two unknowns. So that means that it's possible to solve for the variables. So here the only unknown is acceleration, and then here the unknowns are Fa and acceleration. Everything else we're just leaving as variables, but we actually know all of this stuff from the original question. And if you wanted to, like you could also choose to solve for different variables. Like We're going to be focusing on finding the applied force, because that's what the question asks us. But there could be a variation on the question where it asks you to find acceleration, in which case you'd be solving for that instead. Anyway, so right now we want to rearrange the two equations to get the applied force by itself. So let's start by simplifying equation 1 to get here. We'll notice that there's m2 on both sides, so we can actually just divide both sides by m2 and we get rid of that. So we have acceleration equals mu s times g. And then I'm going to rearrange equation 2 to get the applied force by itself. So if we add both of these terms to both sides, then this is what we get to represent the applied force. So now where we see acceleration over here, let's sub in that equation to get this new equation over here. And so this is like a general equation, no matter what numbers were given in the question, this equation is going to give you the maximum applied force before the second mass slides off of the first mass. And so in this situation, these are our numbers, so I subbed all those in, and if you put this into your calculator, you'll get that the applied force equals about 14.72 newtons. And this is not rounded to sig figs. In this question, there's actually only one sig fig, so you'd have to round that to one significant figure. But yeah, this represents the maximum applied force that you can put on the bottom block before the top block will slide off. Okay, so that's all, and I hope this has given you a better understanding of the two blocks problem in grade 12 physics. Thank you for watching.